Channel 2 News begins right now with breaking news. We continue to follow that breaking news on a massive explosion at Watson Grinding and Manufacturing off Gessner near Clay in northwest Houston. It killed at least two people and has damaged nearly 200 homes. The Houston Fire Department is giving a briefing right now. We want to listen in. To assist us with, uh, with searching the area. Um, at, this, at this time, it's still under the control of the, uh, of the fire department, the entire scene. We're going to proceed after, uh, in, in unison, I guess, in assessing the, the homes that are, that are in the neighborhood to the west and just for structural stability. Uh, as far as the operation, the rescue operation, as I said, we moved into a recovery phase right now. It's going to be meticulous. It's going to take some time. We got members of the hazmat team, rescue team from the fire department, as well as ATF assisting us in this operation. Um, we're, we've set up a unified command with all the agencies that I mentioned here, and, and uh, we're moving systematically, working our way back to what we'll call, call ground zero, I guess, which is the actual plant that, that, uh, that blew up. Um, we'll have, we'll open it up for questions, but at this point, that's, that's where we are in regards to the rescue and recovery operation from the Houston Fire Department. Um, I'm going to turn it over to my uh, colleague here, Art Acevedo, and he'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the investigation portion of, of this incident. Seguro. Mire, este, a este momento, desde la última vez que hablamos, hemos uh, pasado a, otro, a otra uh, uh, fase de la, de la investigación. Tenemos tres perros que nos van a asistir con la investigación, uh, también juntos con el ATF, juntos con el Departamento de Policías y las otras agencias que están aquí ayudándonos. El, el, la, la área todavía está segura, todavía no hemos uh, accesado el, el daño que, que se ha hecho en, en, en la vecindad al oeste de este, de este local. Pero um, a este momento vamos a proceder uh, uh, poco a poco hasta que lleguemos hasta la área que, que fue donde ocurrió la explosión. ¿Sí? Ok. All right, good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I want to just say uh, thank you, everybody, for your patience. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a long night for all of us, and uh, the other thing that we want to uh, throw out to our community, this community is a community of faith, uh, to please pray for the two victims that we have, uh, that we have uh, uncovered here at the scene. Uh, these uh, victims are the high probability that they are employees of this company. Uh, Chief Peña and myself, Senator Whitmire, uh, uh, the ATF uh, SAC here, uh, Fred Malowski and the Mayor Pro Tem and, and our, our council member have uh, been in contact with the families. We've made it, uh, uh, we told them that we can't say 100% it's their loved ones, but you know, you, you connect the dots, the probability is uh, high, very high that it's them. Uh, I can just tell you that the company that's involved has been nothing but cooperative so far with us. Uh, this is a company that's been here for many, many years. And in talking to the employees and their families, uh, they're a pretty tight-knit uh, group of people. Uh, I mean, they, they consider themselves extended family. So my uh, condolences, go, our, all of our condolences go out to uh, the families involved. And obviously, this is a, uh, an area where, you know, it's not, it, it's not the most affluent neighborhood. So uh, my thoughts are with all the uh, individuals, whether they rent or own, that uh, will potentially be displaced by this event uh, this morning. Uh, and so for those that uh, can help, just remember the Red Cross is set up. Uh, they're here in the, uh, in the area, and uh, if you can help these families that are being displaced today, uh, please let us know. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick uh, overview of where we're at. I'm going to then uh, kick it uh, over to uh, uh, Fred Malinowski, who's our colleague from the uh, ATF. He's a special agent in charge here. And then we'll, we'll uh, let the, ask the mayor pro tem or the council member if they want to say anything. And then at the end, we'll open up the questions uh, to any of us up, uh, are up here. Uh, Jerry Pena, who's uh, the assistant director over the Houston Friends of Science Center, is here. If anybody has specific questions for him, but he's not planning on making a statement. First First, let's start with the investigation. The investigation has been launched as a multidisciplinary, multi-jurisdictional investigation uh, that is uh, being uh, conducted by the uh, Houston Fire Department uh, uh, Arson Division, the Houston Police Department Homicide Division, and Environmental Crimes Division with assistance from the from uh, Kim Ogg's office in terms of their Environmental Crimes Unit, uh, and we do have a district attorney here on scene. Uh, this morning, in consultation with Chief Pena, uh, we made the decision that one of the things that's really important when you have uh, an incident like this is to know what's the causative factor, what happened. 
and we know that the ATF does a phenomenal job in terms and brings some phenomenal capabilities in terms of these type of incidents. They've got a lot of experience in it. So we made a request uh, through Fred Malinowski, who will speak after me, uh, to the uh, F, to, to the ATF in terms of res, uh, providing their national response team. Uh, Fred, uh, thankfully, uh, sent it up uh, through chains to the director of the ATF. Uh, director Lombardo is a great leader, and obviously that uh, they've uh, approved it, and they will be here on the ground. So you have a federal and local uh, joint investigation with those three entities. Uh, that investigation will begin, has already begun, uh, but until the fire department releases the actual scene from a safety perspective, investigators actually obviously won't be processing that scene. That immediate scene where ground zero occurred will probably be under police uh, control uh, uh, for probably four to five days, but that should have a minimal impact on this community. Uh, we have some closures to go over. Gesner will remain closed for the remainder of this day. Gesner, uh, which is this main street that we're on right now, between Gennard and Clay Road, will remain closed for the remainder of the day to facilitate all the emergency equipment and the investigators. There are two neighborhoods that have been impacted by this blast. The first neighborhood is West Branch. Uh, rent branch, rent West Branch neighborhood. We will be putting this out through our OEM and through our social media and other, others. And that neighborhood is from Goodrum Road on the north, Clay on the south, Shadowdale on the west, and Gesner on the east. Again, that's Goodrum <clears throat> Road on the north, Clay on the south, Shadowdale on the west, and Gesner on the East. The other neighborhood that is under uh, police control right now because of damage to homes is the Carverdale neighborhood, and that is Gennard Road on the north. Again, this is the Carverdale neighborhood, Gerard North uh, Road on the north, Clay on the south, Gesner on the west, and Tolina Way and Holly uh, Hook, uh, which is a little area right up here. If you need to go to those neighborhoods, the only people that will be allowed in until further notice are residents. Uh, we will be having patrols in that area uh, looking for anybody that might try to loot some of the houses that may end up having to be evacuated because they're deemed unstable by uh, the, the uh, uh, fire department. And we will have those patrols 24-7 uh, in the upcoming days. So stay out of that area. You will not be allowed to be in, uh, to come in. Uh, in those areas. The other thing that's uh, really important uh, for the community, again, we put it out earlier, these blasts have tremendous power. We know that uh, we've had blasts over the years where evidence is found a mile away. Do not assume that there's no evidence uh, if, if you're just because you're a mile from here. Please, if you're within a mile or two of this area, when you get home, uh, check check around your yard, see if you find any, any type of debris, any type of evidence, whether it's human remains, uh, please, please uh, let us know. Uh, we only have two people that are accounted for and we have recovered two bodies. That doesn't mean that there's people that no one knows were in the area and so we cannot say that whether or not there's more victims, but right now it appears a high probability there's only two victims. Uh, and so with that, uh, uh, Mayor Turner is on his, uh, on his way back. He will be back here on the ground about 5 p.m. and there will be one more briefing more than likely later on uh, early evening between 6 or 7 p.m. and that will be the final briefing of the day. And so with that, I want to turn it over very quickly. Uh, unless you want to do Spanish uh, first. Español, Anybody Español. in Espanol? Eh, eh, bueno, <laughs> eh, there we go. <laughs> Okay, so in español, uh, estamos para empezar, como dijo el jefe Peña, que la emergencia ya ha parado. No tenemos ningún peligro sobre esta emergencia, pero lo que sí tenemos es una investigación criminal que hemos empezado uh, con la policía de Houston, el de, la división de, de homicidios, uh, y también con nuestros colegas en Arson y nuestros colegas en el federal. Esta mañana el jefe Peña y yo tomamos la decisión de que queremos todos los equipos eh, con, des, eh, con desprecisación y el ETF tiene una unidad que es eh, excelente y pedimos que su eh, team nacional que venga aquí a Houston y esta tarde van a llegar esta área, la calle que ven aquí esta calle principal uh, esta calle no va a estar abierta eh, la Gessner desde la Gennard al norte hasta la Clay esta calle, esta carretera no va a abrir hay dos vecinarios que han estado impactados por este evento, el West Branch que está entre el norte en la, en la Good Run al sur en la Clay 
al oeste en Shadowdale y al este Gesner y el otro vicinario es el Carverdale que está al norte Gennard, al sur Clay, al oeste Gesner y al este uh, Talina Way y Hollywood. No van a poder entrar a esa área hasta el control de la, del departamento policiaco de Houston. No van a poder entrar sin identificación si no eres eh, un residente en esa área. También vamos a tener patrullas patrullando las 24 horas en estos, con esto, en estos vecindarios para asegurar que nadie esté robando a estas uh, personas que son víctimas que desgraciadamente no van a poder vivir en su casa. Y, ese, y esta área aquí va a estar cebrada donde está la investigación por cuatro o cinco días. Ok, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, the SAC uh, for the Houston field office, uh, Fred Malinowski of the ATF, and then uh, we'll turn it over from there to, uh, to the mayor pro tem. Good afternoon. Uh, as the chief said, the ATF national response team is going to be coming in. They're traveling here today. I uh, just want to give you a little background on that team. That team brings experts from across the country in. Um, they've worked over 850 scenes. Um, all major arsons and major explosives have happened in this country in the last 30 years have been worked by the national response team. They bring chemists. They bring explosive ex uh, experts. They bring uh, fire research experts. They bring canines. Uh, they bring electrical engineers, um, and then they have the ability to reach out and grab any other experts they need within the federal government. So um, they will be here just to give you a little background of, of what they've done in the past. If you remember when we had the major explosion in West Texas, that was a team that processed <laughs> that scene. They also processed all the scenes uh, during the Austin bombing case. Um, they're, they're ATF's most elite team, um, so we are bringing uh, the best people from across the country in to make sure that we know exactly what happened during this incident. Um, so thank you. Okay, I want to add one other thing because when we talk about criminal investigations and you talk about uh, explosions, people start thinking of terrorism, they start thinking about intentional acts. As of, the, as of right now, we have no indication that there's any terrorism nexus or of any intentional act. Having said that, this industry that we're dealing with, when you're talking about chemicals and you're talking about these type of industries, are highly regulated industries. They're very strict, uh, stringent requirements in terms of a lot of things they have to do. And when if we investigate and we find that uh, things that were supposed to be done by either the uh, primary company or vendors that are servicing their equipment and uh, things of that nature, and then people die and we have explosions and all these other things, that can create a criminal offense. And so it's really important that the community knows that that's what we're investigating at this point, and there's no, no indication of an intentional act that led to the explosion in terms of wanting to make the explosion occur, uh, either by a, 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 you know some disgruntled employer or anybody else, or a terrorist uh, event. Is it, are everybody clear on that? Okay, thank you. Chief Pena wants to add one last thing, and then we're going to turn over to, <clears throat> to, uh, to the mayor. Thank you, Chief. Uh, I just want to clarify where we are on the, on the recovery phase. We're conducting our primary searches in the, in the area of the explosion, okay? We've conducted a primary search in the neighborhood to the west of, of this uh, location. In that area, we're also going back a second time for our secondary assessment and uh, to ensure that there are no victims in those homes, okay? Uh, no indication uh, on the initial search, but we're going to do a more uh, systematic search. We have, uh, as I mentioned, rescue dogs uh, along with us, members from the ATF and police department, to ensure that we're doing a systematic search uh, of, these, of these neighborhoods, okay? So um, we don't expect, uh, well, I'm not going to say uh, anything else beyond that, and we'll have additional information if we find uh, information that should be reported to the media. Okay, thank you. Mayor uh, Pro Tem. Yes, as the chief mentioned, Mayor Turner lands at 5 o'clock today. We've been in constant communication with the mayor regarding this incident, and he sends his condolences to the two families. We have established a shelter at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's located at 4703 Shadowdale. Our next phase is moving from the shelter that we established into temporary housing for those families because as you can see a lot of these houses around this neighborhood are not going to be livable for a number of weeks. So we've moved from the shelter stage over to the temporary housing stage. So folks that have issues with the homes that they live in now, please have it head over to 4703 Shadowdale and we'll work on the transition into homes from there. So thank you. 
Okay. Well, one other thing before opening it, do you want to say anything real quick? Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, so our office is working on recovery efforts as well. If you have any donations that you'd like to drop off, please do so at the Duncan YMCA on Clay Road. They're available to take donations. And if anyone listening has any issues, any questions, any concerns, please contact my office at 832-393-3010. We're available to help. Thank you. Chair, do you want to say anything on deficit? Just, just briefly, uh, the state is monitoring it. I've been in contact with the DPS and the emergency center in Austin. Uh, they are not indirectly involved right now because of the excellent job of HPD and the Houston fire. I would emphasize that this is a working class neighborhood. And the real tragedy is these individuals woke up this morning needing resources that quite frankly, most of them do not have. So I would reach out to the faith community, the uh, Salvation Army Red Cross is present, and I think this is re going to require a community effort, not only our agencies, but neighborhoods, adjoining neighborhoods, to reach out to these folks that do not have the resources that maybe other communities do. So just notice that this is a working class neighborhood, and um, they've got some real challenges. But let me say the victim assistance program of HPD and Houston Fire that I've witnessed this morning. I cannot say enough about them and, and our two chiefs have sat with the families, hugged the families. We're dealing with family members that are in the military that need to be uh, expedited their, their travel. So uh, I'm just here to say the state is, is impressed with the local community operation and certainly these agencies. But I think in days to come, we will do a review by the TCQ and other agencies if warranted. But at this point, it's certainly too early to uh, energize those agencies. And one last thing that uh, you, you, you uh, I thought, I'm not sure if I tweeted, I'm a Twitter bug. Uh, we have one, one family uh, who we believe uh, is one of the deceased uh, employees. The son is a 21-year Marine, 21-year-old Marine, and, and so you guys need to tag the United States Marine Corps at Camp Lejeune. The, f the family has contacted the Marines, and the Marines says until there's 100% certainty he will not be released. Well, Marines, we need you to release that young man to get him home. We're working. Uh, we're a family. We shouldn't have to get uh, the, the president involved. We shouldn't have to get anybody involved. We all know what the right thing to do. So please tweet at the Marine Corps. Let this man, this let this Marine get on a plane and get home to his family. Uh, because no matter what, his family needs him. And uh, you can't be a family in words and simplify or in hollow words. Get that Marine Marine home, get him on a plane, get him home to Houston. With that, we'll open it up to questions. Chief, can you speak to the gender of the uh, Two males. Uh, they're two male Hispanics, a long time, uh, uh, again, it's not 100 percent, but probability being what it is, we don't, we don't have any other people that are looking for their family members. Their vehicles are here. You connect all those dots, but you can't say until you definitively identify them that it's 100 percent, but we're not in the business of keeping people false hope. And so the probability of that not being the two male Hispanic employees uh, are, are pretty slim. Were they the only two people in the building? They're the only two people that were uh, injured there that we're aware of. Uh, again, we've got cadaver dogs here. We'll start doing a, a secondary search. Uh, but I can tell you that, like I told them, they're people of faith. There was somebody that was very close. His truck went flying, and all he ended up was with cuts. That's the person that was transported. Chief, so. can you talk a little bit about the that, I, I'll talk to the fire chief. I'm a cop. We can't even say that word. So I'll chief, turn over. Mire, para pensamos que los dos empleados que murieron aquí, que estamos casi 100% perseguro, eh, son hispanos. Llevan muchas, muchos años trabajando con esta compañía. Son una compañía que es como, como una familia. Y uno de los hijos de 21 años está en las marinas de los Estados Unidos en Camp Lejeune. Y necesitamos los Marines que manden ese muchacho para acá para que esté su familia. Ok, thank you. Chief, Chief that's for you. Chief, yo quería hablar sobre esto antes. Hoy, ¿hay una preocupación sobre esto? ¿Es todavía una preocupación? ¿Qué es esto? No, no, at this time, at this time, we've secured the uh, tank. So they have a 2,000-gallon uh, propylene tank on scene. Uh, the valving has been secured uh, for the pipes that were leading into the warehouse where the manufacturing was uh, whatever Sorry. process they do. So um, th that's been secured. We have no, no further concerns with leaks, but we do have uh, personnel here on scene to, to monitor that. 
uh, as well as the people who actually filled the tank on Monday. That's how we know that, uh, you know, with levels that we should have been at. Were there other tanks <coughs> on site that there are, were destroyed? No, no. None of the tanks were destroyed. We had our hazmat unit uh, out there. They did an assessment of the integrity of those tanks. They seemed to be intact. None of them were, were visibly damaged. Um, and at this time, we, we're not concerned with, uh, with future leaks. Do you, have a, do you have a good accounting of all chemicals that were in that property? <coughs> Is the RPC for the area? Right, have right. For that? Right. We do, uh, we, our inspectors uh, do, are, is gathering, they're gathering that, that information. We will have a full inventory of what we know. The uh, building owner, the business owner is here with us. He's being fully cooperative with the investigation. Um, and so we have no no question that we're going to get uh, the full inventory and MSDSs for all the materials that were, that were present. No what I can't tell you right now, what I can say is that uh, there is no hazard with the, with the air quality. Okay. We do have uh, hazmat on scene. They've been monitoring throughout the day. We have had no concerns with uh, with the the quality of the of the air that we've been breathing at this moment. Chief, are you aware of any incidents <coughs> that have happened at this particular warehouse? When do you think you're going to have a handle on whether or not there's other victims besides the two you just identified? Look, uh, what we can say right now is, uh, and, and I don't want to get too far into the investigation, but what we can say is that uh, the 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 building or the business owner has accounted for. Everybody uh, on his roster. There are, there's two that, that are still unaccounted for, uh, but we won't be able to make that determination until we physically go in there and ID uh, the uh, the victims. The Chief, Chief, Pasadena, Chief Pasadena, you talk about that the asking residents to look in their homes for debris, but also you mentioned body parts. Is there any evidence or possibility that the blast could have done that? And, or is that just stuff because of the force of the blast? Or is that just something you have to look into? Yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, blasts, uh, you can talk to my ATF brother. When you have these type of events, they're very powerful. We know that we have a body part that's quite a few, uh, quite a distance away. We know that there's debris that's about a half a mile. And uh, 20 years ago, we had a, an incident here in Houston where, like, a year later, they found uh, a body part from that incident a mile away. So, uh, you know, we'd rather be safe and be uh, and, and err on the side of casting a wide net and having our community, which is really the, the best force multiplier for the for the law enforcement, first responders, the community itself. And I think that was on display during Harvey. That's on display every day here in Houston. We'd rather that everybody gets eyes around their property. So if there is an, something we can recover, then do uh, make assumptions. Assumptions in this business, if you make assumptions, you do it uh, and you err on the side of let's cast a wide net. So pretty much it was supposed to happen on the way. Was that one of the victims that you played for? Or that you think? Or? You, more than likely, yes. Chief, Chief Pena, I, Chief, yes, when do you think you'll be able... <clears throat> When do you think you'll be able to actually get into ground zero to start that kind of boots on the ground investigation? Well, we're in the process of that now. You know, so we were waiting uh, initially because we still had some fires that were burning. Uh, we we uh, decided not to extinguish those because every time you add water, you have a concern with the runoff. So we decided to let those things burn before we actually started moving in into the uh, the hot zone, right? But uh, in in parallel with that, we were doing assessments in in the. Uh, in the, in, in the neighborhoods. At this moment, we've, we've uh, moved past the hazard uh, phase. Now we're in the recovery phase, and we're systematically moving back in into the, uh, into the area where we believe was, the, was ground zero. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. Chief, I just want to know the employees were there at the time when the mess happened. The two victims were there. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. Go ahead. So how many employees were there when this, when this happened, and do we know exactly where the two employees who or, or the two victims where they were when the explosion happened? No, no. All we know is that uh, we have two victims that are in the compound. Uh, as far as where they were within that compound, I I'm not exactly sure at this moment. But they were the only two in the building? Just for clarification, they were the only two there? At That's, we only have two that are unaccounted for. We don't have anybody else looking for their family members. So, you know, we're, we're assuming that uh, that they were the only two there. You said the owners of the cooperative. Is it giving you any indication as to what may have happened? Uh, well, uh, again, you know, until we conduct the investigation, the cause and origin, um, all we can tell you is, uh, is you know, 
it was uh, may, may have been a leak, but that's just a huge, huge assumption at this time. Until we're able to get in there, do the cause and origin, with the assistance of our of our uh, partner agencies, uh, we won't have a, a full determination. Did the owner tell you if those two employees were there because of possibility of a leak, or that was their ship? No, 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 that no, was their ship? no, no, no. They were, they were not because of, of a report of a leak. Uh, there is a gym on the facility. Um, the reports are that that uh, employees would come in early before their shift to to work out. So again, we're making huge assumptions at this time. Right. Let us finish uh, the investigation, and that way we can give you some concrete information instead of just uh, assumptions. Chief, yes. you about 200 homes damaged, or we have about 199 homes in this in this area. Okay, uh, we've assessed between 180, 190 at this point. Uh, the majority of those are, are have received some sort of damage. The ones that are more proximal to the to the area of uh, of the blast are are damaged heavily. Some of them off the foundation. So it's a uh, it's just a, a range of, of uh, damage in that location. Yes. Mm -hmm. We heard reports that there was a man who was injured with head injury inside a trailer behind this business, mm -hmm. um, and he was found after your fire department primary search. Do you have any information on his condition? I know he was trying No, not at this not, not at this moment. Uh, we do know that uh, this was as uh, maybe two hours or three hours ago. We had reports that there was a 18 patients throughout the, the various hospitals that uh, reported to the hospital with complaints uh, reportedly from the blast. But from the HFD standpoint, we've transported uh, that, that one individual. Uh, there may have been a second one transported later, but I know for sure that we transported one earlier this morning. Mm -hmm. Chief Espino, there are residents in the West one. Branch in yeah. Carbondale who told us they have not been allowed know. to go back into their homes to board up windows. Um, yeah. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, we're going to start letting residents go back in here uh, shortly. They have to have ID. Uh, we know that this is a, a large, uh, significant Hispanic population. Uh, some of them may not have IDs, but our officers are smart enough to know how to separate people, interview people. We have ways to identify them through the registration, all kinds of. So we want people to come back in because we do want them to board up their homes uh, if the windows are broken, uh, and we want them to be able to do that starting today. So we will be uh, we will be doing that in the probably the next 30 minutes or so. Okay. Uh, so sí, es importante para la comunidad hispana. Acuérdese que el Departamento de Policía de Houston, aquí somos una ciudad, que somos una ciudad que todos andamos juntos y nos llevamos. Acuérdese, si bien esta área, si tiene identificación, no va a tener problema entrar. Si no tiene identificación, puede usar un veo, puede usar, puede usar su, el registro del vehículo, pero los oficiales sí van a estar en, tratando de asegurar que no es una persona que quiere venir a robar. Pero no tengan temor, aquí no está en la inmigración, aquí no está nada de eso, aquí estamos para ayudar y asistir a la comunidad. Le suplicamos que en los últimos en como 30 minutos, más o menos, vamos a empezar a dejar que los, las personas que están, los residentes, vengan. Sí, eh, a la vez que el patrón de, de, de bomberos eh, detenirme que no es peligroso entrar a la casa, lo van a dejar entrar a su casa y si tienen que cubrir las ventanas o algo, pueden hacerlo. ¿Ok? All right, thank you all. This is a familiar tragedy for Houston. What do you say, what did you say to this family when you're trying to I mean, look. Let me just say this about uh, the, this uh, this uh, this uh, this company's been here for a long time. If you look at the gym that they put together for their employees, uh, they care about their employees. I mean, they have invested in them. Uh, you extend your condolences uh, to them, and and I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, but it's never fun to talk to people about the possibility of loved ones and the high probability that loved one died. But I think that in this city. Uh, that's uh, led by a mayor that uh, really cares about a community and that has elected officials that care. We, we really are a big city that is a family. And so we wanted to be the, the chief, the fire chief, the ATF. We wanted to be there to tell the family ourselves. And the other thing that happens is that people want to know right away. And if we haven't been able to tell them right away, we wanted to be the ones that explain to them what we have been doing because we have to mitigate the threat to the to the greater community uh, and then we have to move on to deal with them but I think that uh, the fact that we did that uh, we, we, we want to take victims and turn them into survivors and we want to take victims and help them restore their lives moving forward and a big part of that's how do we as a community as elected officials as, uh, as as directors how do we treat our community and in this city I think we all treat each other as family 
So I think they really appreciate it. Okay, thank you all very much. There will be no other briefings here unless it's, an, unless it's a public safety issue till, till the mayor gets here. And you're probably looking at 6 or 7 o'clock. We'll put that out in time at about 5, and we'll let you know where more likely they'll be here. Thank you. Get the Marines to get that Marine Ending up a very lengthy briefing um, from the police chief Art Acevedo, the police chief Sam Pena, and Fred Malinowski of the ATF. So they are all investigating this explosion that happened at about 4.20 this morning at Watson Grinding and Manufacturing. Um, just to go over some of the details we know, they say that there were two people reported unaccounted for and they have recovered two bodies. So they say it is highly likely that the two people who have died were employees there at Watson um, that, that facility, although that is not confirmed yet at this time. Um, they do say that there is a shelter opened up for families that still um, cannot go back to their homes, and that shelter is at 4703 Shadowdale Drive. It's the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and they will be working to get those families into more permanent housing um, because they said some of those families will not be able to go back to their homes for weeks. Two neighborhoods are closed unless you actually live in those neighborhoods. It's West Branch neighborhood and Carverdale neighborhood. They say they are under heavy police patrols to prevent any looting and that they will not allow anybody who does not belong in those neighborhoods inside those areas. Um, they're looking at about 200 homes that were damaged. Some of the homes knocked off of their foundations. They have called in the ATF and asked for their most elite team to help in this investigation. They say not because they believe there's any sort of intentional fire that was set, but they say it could have been criminal if some other company came in to service machines, these industries are highly regulated, and if they did something that caused that fire, even if it was not intentional, that could be considered a criminal act. So those are all things that are under investigation at this time. Um, lastly, they said that if you live anywhere within one to two miles of this facility of Watson Valve, um, they said if you see any debris on your property when you get home today, if you've been at work, um, they ask that you call HPD to report anything that might be debris. Don't touch it. Don't move it because that could be evidence that they need to look at as part of their investigation. So Mayor Turner is out of town. They're expecting him to land back in Houston at about 5 o'clock. So they're expecting their next update to be at about 6 or 7 p.m. tonight. We'll have updates throughout the day on air and online. We now want to return you to NBC's special report of the impeachment trial of President Trump. This has been breaking news. For continuing coverage, go to click2houston.com.